All right. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Fred and Friends. I'm your host, Fred Schultz. Um, got a few things tonight. Well, I got, I got so much going on, I don't even know where to start. Um, got a special guest all the way from Down Under. All the way from Down Under. You're going to like Connor. He's a, he's a pretty cool guy. Uh, we're going to bring him on in a little while. Um, I'm also going to have uh, my little buddy, Steve McGuire, from Paintball Podcast. I know he's gonna yeah, say yeah, I got him laughing. I can see him in the green room, man. I do that just to bug the hell out of him. But uh it's the unknown paintball podcast. It's uh pretty cool. And um we'll talk a little bit more uh about what we've got going tomorrow also. Um we've got some pretty cool things uh for tomorrow night, our Christmas show. And I'm also gonna have William Bailey on and uh, hey Robert Hansen, how you doing, buddy? Boy, you're popping up right now. Oh man, you know, real quick, guys, tonight you're gonna want to use your name. Because Gino from Velkin has given me an M17 paintball marker to give away. And what we're going to do is uh, people that chime in tonight. Hey, Kenny Stewart. Uh, people that chime in tonight, we're going to um, take all our names. And Steve had a real cool thing. Uh, Gino donated one to Steve's uh, show uh, the other day. And uh, Steve put together this pinwheel-like thing, man, that he found uh, on the internet. It's cool as heck, believe me. And he put all the names in this big wheel, and then he spun it like three times. And the third time, that person won that marker. So what we're doing tonight is we're going to do the same thing. After we're done, uh, we're going to go through and all the names that the people that chime in and, and say good things. Uh, we're going to take and uh, put their name on that, that wheel, and we're going to spin it. And then next week, we are going to give one of those away. So, and, and Kenny Stewart, um, yeah, I can't say enough about Kenny. Kenny uh, gave away a whole bunch of Tipman and, and a JT jersey and a whole bunch of things a few weeks ago on my show. And Kenny says that he wants to do it again sometime, maybe in the new year. So uh, we're definitely looking forward to that. Uh, Kenny Stewart um, has a general paintball museum. He's just a, a terrific person. I, I absolutely love it. And Ian Jacobs. Ah, there's a guy, Immortal Air. Ian won a uh, uh, Immortal Air tank at the cancer benefit this last year. It was uh, pretty cool. I was I was so happy for him. Uh, he is just, uh, just a nice guy, period. And, you know, that's one thing that got me back into paintball is, is trying to bring everybody together in this sport and make the sport bigger than what it is. So, you know, I've been working really hard, and I got to say, I'm not working alone. I have got so many people jumping in to give me a hand right now. It's just, uh, it's unbelievable, and I am just, I mean, I'm awed by it. I really am. My show last week has had over 10,000 hits in five days. Uh, now, there's no way I can thank you people enough for that. It's it's just an amazing, amazing thing that you're doing for me and, and what you're doing for the sport. Because, you know, the people that I have on are, are good people. They're they're working extremely hard for the sport. And uh, that's why I put them on the show. And if we all work together, man, we're going to rock next year. I'm telling you, next year we are going to rock. But we have to all work together, period. So that's one thing we want to do. So remember tonight now, chime in, please, please put your name on it when you chime in so we can put you on the pinwheel and you could win that M17 marker next week on my show on Tuesday night. And then uh, we'll talk, uh, we're going to have a Christmas special tomorrow. Um, it's a two hour special that I'm doing with uh, Steve McGuire and Steve and I'll talk a little bit more about that when I pull him up here in a little while. And uh, everything... Uh, should be pretty cool. Should be pretty cool. Hey, Richard Wilcox chiming in. How you doing, Rich? All right. Well, as everybody knows, and Steve teases me about, uh, he says my monologue's too long. And, you know, he's probably right, but that's why it's my show. <laughs> anyhow, I love you anyhow, Stevie. Don't worry, buddy. Anyhow, I give my shout outs. These are people from the past that worked extremely hard to build a sport to what it is today. And you know, one thing I don't want is I don't want the people nowadays forgetting the people that actually brought it to this point. And these guys worked extremely, extremely hard. They really, really did. And um, start with Mr. Tim Schloss. Tim, Tiger Stripe Camo used to be my sponsor for years, years, and years. Uh, he has Gateway Paintball now in uh, St. Louis. And as Tim says, 
10 minutes from the airport. So if you get a chance, uh, Bud Orr and, and William Bailey, they went there uh, a couple of months ago and, and they just said it was fantastic. They said it was really, really cool. It's got like a hundred acres way, I understand it. And he just bought like three old Lear jets to put out there. So I, I guess it's pretty cool. So I think you're gonna wanna check that out. And then Mr. Dan and Mr. John Colby, um, they will be on the show tomorrow night. Um, you're going to like them guys. They're, they're pretty cool. Immortal air used to be air America. As you can see the jacket right behind me. Now they're immortal air and they're, uh, probably the best air system out there. I know Dan and John, they worked their butts off to make the regs, uh, just perfect. So can't say enough about those guys. And then Tom K, Tom K will also be on our show tomorrow. Tom was on a couple of weeks ago. Um, Tom had air gun designs and just like the mags you see sitting right here. Um, I can't say enough what he has done for the sport and he is still coming on and, and talking to people and still helping to promote the sport and keep it going. You know, uh, the guys I mentioned, like I say, they work extremely hard in the past and they still are today. And I absolutely love it. What's going on, Larry Taylor. And also Bud Orr. You know, I can never say enough about Bud Orr. He's, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I just can't say anything more than I've already said about the guy. The guy has been terrific for so many years. Him and Tom K has put so much time, effort, and and leadership into making paintball what it is today. Bud will be on the show again tomorrow, too. So you guys are going to want to really chime into that. Tomorrow is going to be just a, a terrific show. Um, Steve and I are really looking forward to it. And then Rainy and Juvie Boucher. Rainy and Juvie Boucher had paintball news back in the day. These guys would put out a paper two times a month, and it would have list all the fields, everything that was happening, everything that was coming up and going on, and never charged the players a penny for it. All they, they took the advertising money, and they did this for all for the players. It was just, uh, I can't say enough about them guys. They're really just terrific. Rainy and Juvie Boucher. And Rainy's going to be on the show uh, after the first of the year, too. You're going to want to tune in and, and listen to this guy. He's a pretty cool guy. And then Randy Camilla. Uh, Randy uh, used to run APG. Uh, Randy gave me my first cover shot and actually got me going pretty good in, in the sport of paintball. And I can never thank him enough. And Jerry Braun. Jerry Braun, uh, paintball sports. Uh, Jerry has a field. Uh, back east. Uh, Kevin Donaldson is actually his gatekeeper. And Kevin, he takes and uh, they're having the woods ball. It's coming up next year. And it's something that's going to be pretty darn cool. I think uh, you're going to, if you get on my site, it'll tell you all about it and tell you how to get a hold of Kevin and yeah, yada, 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 and so on and so forth. And then Gino from Belkin. Now I told you guys earlier, Gino was giving us an M17 marker to give away on this show. Uh, we're going to give it away next week. And um, I got to tell you, Gino is a cool guy. And Gino is going to uh, come and join us here in a little while, too. So we're going to put Gino on. And then Mark Gong Jr. Now, Mark Gong Jr., I, I talk about the people of the past. Now I'm going to talk just a little bit about the people of the future, the people that we need to keep the sport rolling. And Mark Gong Jr. is seven years old. He practices with the OG Ironman. The little guy rocks. He is just about as, as cool a guy as you could ever want to meet. And you guys, if you watch our show tomorrow, which I hope everybody does, you're going to get to meet him. His dad, uh, Mark Gong, played on my my team, Constant Pursuit, for a few years. Uh, Mark did the show with me down at MGM Disney. And Mark plays with uh, OG Ironman right now. And uh, I can't say enough about how he's raised his son. It's... Uh, it's just been terrific. It really, really is. And then real quick, I, just uh, not to keep talking, but, you know, I know that bugs the hell out of Steve. So I'm going to throw just a couple more minutes in here real quick is uh, I want to say hi to all the Booney boys up in Canada. The Booney boys, I, I did a couple tournaments up there years ago in the Dome, had an absolutely terrific time. And it was a five man tournament. So I had five constant pursuit guys and I seen these five boonie boy guys that, that were up there playing. And I, I said, well, Hey, you know, how about I fly you guys down and we'll go do the world cup together, you know? And they're like, Whoa, yeah, let's do it, man. So, you know, what we did is I took them, we all went to the world cup. I don't even remember how we did to be honest with you. All I know is we had a hell of a good time, just an absolutely great, 
great bunch of guys. Um, I'm looking forward next year. Actually, I am going to put the Booney Boys on my show. Um, I'm going to have uh, as many as I can get a jam in this little spot here. And uh, we're just going to talk uh, Canadian paintball, Booney Boys stuff, and just have a great time. You know, Bill Bailey, he, he puts it probably the best is uh, when we all we all sit and we talk, it's like after the big game and we're sitting around the campfire just shooting the breeze. You know, you, you just you got to love it. You just absolutely got to love it. And and one more I want to mention here is the old iron division in Germany. Now, these guys, I've been been chatting with them for the last month. And uh, what a great bunch of guys they are. And we're going to do a show with them next year also after the first of the year. And so we're going to get their you know, perspective of paintball in Germany. And uh, that should be pretty damn cool. I, I got to tell you, I am really, really looking forward to it. And I'm getting just a whole bunch of Facebook users uh, with really good comments. But man, if you guys could throw your name on there, I would love to put your name on the, the spinning wheel for next week to win this M17 marker that Gino at Belkin is giving away. And uh, real quick, let me mention Gino, because, you know, Christmas is coming up real quick now. I mean, you're talking a couple of days. Um, and Belkin, they, they do not pay me to say this. Let me start that right off the bat. Belkin is a good good company and they have just everything that you could want in paintball and if you get a chance you know they're really a good group of people there too you need to get a hold of Belkin if you're looking for anything paintball because you know it's snowing a little bit back east so obviously you're not running around playing constantly and everything like that but now's a good time to maybe upgrade your gear maybe maybe get yourself a new marker to, to get used to it work on it uh, get it the way you like it for next year or yeah, well, next year is really close now, guys. So anyhow, you get a chance to uh, think about that. And uh, again, I want to thank all my viewers. You guys have made my show just explode. You guys have shared it so many times to so many people. And I am just, uh, I'm just grateful beyond words. Okay. Okay. So having said all of that and... Uh, just really, really feeling good about tonight. I'm going to start dragging out some of my guests here, okay? First, I'm going to drag out Mr. Steve McGuire. Hey, bud. How you doing tonight, Steve? I'm doing fantastic. But before we bring out guests, I, I'm really excited to help you give away that M17 because Gino's generosity is just absolutely amazing. But can I make a suggestion? Uh oh, here we go. Yeah. Instead please. of grabbing a person's name that are watching in the show tonight, because sifting through all the comments to try to find names and only getting one at a time, that's going to be very, very time consuming. If okay. I were you, I would suggest make a post on Flagpole Productions and say one comment only, just say enter me. And that way you can cut and paste everybody and it'll save you about. 10, 20, 30 hours worth of work. Wow. Cause I Just was going to do that for me. For me, <laughs> I only had uh, 59 names on my contest yeah, and they're rolling me, by right now. <laughs> <laughs> and it took me a half an hour. So I would recommend, I mean, your show, you do what you no, want to no, do. No, no. No, okay. Let's do that then, you know, because uh, we absolutely want uh, people to get that marker, you know, Gino um, from Belkin sports, <laughs> Uh, just an absolutely terrific person. And oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, just like I said, I don't know if you read my page, you know, my post that I put on there. I read you know, everything you do. Oh, do you really? Yeah. He's like Santa Claus, man. You know, I mean, the guy, the guy has been around a lot of years and has really, really worked hard for the sport. Of course, he owns a big business, but damn it, he worked to get that big business. You know, nobody. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, you know, my hat's off to Gino. And what he does for the sport is just, uh, it's incredible. It's really good. So, Whatever Let's it takes. That. Get on Flagpole Productions. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going to interrupt go. you. Let's make a specific post. To, and you just comment to the post. If you'd like, I'll make the post right now while we talk. You do it so that people know by the end of the show to get a hold of that. And then we will uh, figure out just, who's going to get that cool, all right. cool marker from Gino from Belkin. All right. As a matter of fact, everybody... Um, I'm going to bring on William Bailey right now. 
I have William on all the time. What's going on, Bill? Hello. Not much. How are you guys doing? Ah, staying out of trouble. You know, it's a lot cheaper right here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so oh, you know boy. all about the giveaway we're doing, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, that's just cool as heck that he's doing that. Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, we're going to have him on here in a little while. And then I'm bringing on Connor from Down Under. And uh, I am looking forward to... Uh, to listen to this guy. It just should be pretty cool. As a matter of fact, you know, I, I see we got Gino in the green room. And Connor, you're going to come. You're coming, baby. Don't worry. I'm going to bring Gino on right now. How you doing this evening, Gino? What's going on? Oh, a little late, little late for me. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it is. But, you know, you're looking chipper, my good man. <laughs> we appreciate very much you jumping on. And, you know, I, I, I can't even thank you enough. Uh, you gave the marker out on Steve's show and you're giving the marker out on my show. It's, uh, you know, like I said, there's just not words for it, buddy. I appreciate well, it. Well, listen, we appreciate you guys. There's not many places to advertise and promote these days. So thank God for you guys, you know. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that very much. You know, Gino, um, everybody's heard about you. I asked Connor, I says, have you heard about Gino from Velcan? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and he's down under, man. So, you know, I'm going to bring on Connor right now. Connor is from Australia. Boom. How are you doing, Connor? I'm great. I took Steve's advice. I've uh, adapted a new tie uh, for the <laughs> evening special tonight. <laughs> So um, I have, it's my uh, sweatband, actually, uh, but I thought it was uh, rather quite cool. It, it is, you know, and nothing clashes. It looks really great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, you know everybody. You, you know Steve because uh, you met him on his show. And and yes. I, I introduced you to William Bailey earlier yeah. um, in the green room. This is Gino. This is the owner of Belkin right here. This is the man. How you doing? Oh, okay. It's I'm a pleasure to meet you, this. right? I'm going to interrupt for some one second. I'm going to admit this because everybody else is scared too. Gino, how do you pronounce your last name? Oh, that's a good question because half my family says one thing and the other half says the other thing. Well, you're the only person that matters in my opinion. So how do you pronounce your last name? Okay. And that's how I'm going to say I'm it. I'm going to help you. It's Posto Revo. Posto Revo. Posto Revo. Okay, Got it. Because, you know, everybody, we all know you as Gino Velkin because everybody's afraid to say your last <laughs> name and blow it, man. No, it's easy. Posto Revo. Posto Revo. Got it. Like, Revo. Even, even for us, like, down here, down under, it's just like Gino is synonymous with Velkin. If you mention <laughs> your name, it's just... Oh, okay. We're talking about Valken now. Like it, it's, Thanks. it might be an option to legally change to just Gino Valken. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I don't have a middle name, so I'm thinking about just making it Gino Paintball. <laughs> oh. That that is like some fancy ideas right there. I, I like that idea. All right, um, now Connor, the way I work this is the new guy on the show. We put him on the spot right off the bat. Okay, right. Out. So, buddy, now you are going on the spot. You're going to tell us how you got into paintball, and and what's it like playing paintball down there in Australia? All right, so I I got uh, into paintball that it it was just something that I heard about, like I saw literally at a flea market here, uh, an old JT pro flex. And I was like, what is that for? And I asked the guy and he, he basically said, you know, oh, this is to play paintball. And then I would like, it was 20 bucks. So I bought it. And, um, after that, I found that there was a local speedball field here, um, locally, and I used to go and watch it like your Friday night football. And it was all very like hobbled together because paintball at the time when I started seeing it, it was only really starting to like come into its own, especially down here, because it was actually illegal for many, many years. Um, and people used to just play it out in the paddocks. Um, you'd like ring a number, a bloke would be like, meet me in the car park here, bring 50 to to $100 cash. And you'd all pile into this guy's car and go out to his property to play. Um, <laughs> and, um, and like, even then, we used to just have basic safety glasses when they were doing that, like, just the same as what you'd use when you'd be using a power tool. And they were little pistols that were little bolt action sort of ones. But I used to watch it. And at the time, I was 14. And you weren't allowed to play unless you were 18. But because I, like, 
I said to the field owner, hey, can I come help ref? Can I, can I watch? Can I get involved? And he was like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And as the relationship developed, he'd be like looking around going, all right, here you go, man. Here's, here's a marker and here's, here's 200 rounds. Go on and don't tell your mother. And um, <laughs> that, that's how, that's how I, I started. That so many times in the field, don't <laughs> tell your mother. <laughs> yeah. And um, the first actual marker – that I shot in speedball was an old Bob Long Intimidator, like one of the very first iterations of it. And for us down here, that was like getting the holy grail because we either had Tipman Pro Carbines um, and Tipman was sort of like the big, the big thing down under. And then when a lot of the electronic markers started to come out from like Planet Eclipse, when they had auto cockers and and things like that, it was just like our minds down here were getting blown um, because, but like that that kind of technology marker wise had been out in the states for years and years and years. It's like it's like I was saying on Steve's show that um, you know Australia is kind of like the last to know. Like if something new came out, say in the <laughs> states, you guys would have if you launch something new, it'd be out and on the shelves within a matter of weeks down here. We'd nearly be waiting six to 12 months before somebody might go, Oh, Hey, that's new. Let's get that in. And, um, so it's like, I, I always have like had that keen that interest to, to really try and stay up to date. And I found Steve and I found Fred and, it's like literally watching those two guys. I feel like I'm kind of keeping my finger on the pulse as to what's happening. And I saw you last week, Gino, and like I was just blown away. Like even hearing what you were talking about, like the sport, the passions, and like even from Fred and Steve too. Um, I'm like, damn, I wish I won that marker that you were given away, but that's actually illegal in Australia. So oh, um, wait. How, why, why now? Why is it illegal in Australia? Is it because it's magfed? No, magfed is legal in New South Wales only at this point. The reason why that particular marker is illegal is because in Australia, even though paintball markers, as July of um, last year, got taken off the firearms register, that they're no longer considered a firearm, the paintball markers to import still kind of come under the same kind of laws as if you're importing a firearm the only mag fed that we can have in new south wales without a problem or an issue from like customs the police or anything like that is the planet eclipse emf 100 i think it's called the reason why gino's one like the vulcan i want it so bad like oh um <laughs> is that it looks like an ar-15 like a modded ar-15 even though you've got the gas cylinder and any copper would have to be um, like stupid to think it was. Well, like you'd never want to point it at an officer either. Yeah. Well, well they're real even if you had here. it, yeah. You, even you, if you had it and <clears throat> you had it in a bag, you still have to declare that you have paintball markers on your person, and the copper might go, "I want to see it." And when you show it, if it's something that looks like a real firearm, he'll go, "I'm confiscating this. You're now being charged for having a prescribed, like a prohibited firearm. Everything." Wow. Uh, hypothetically um, speaking, what do you, you shoot now? Um, currently, uh, LV1 by Planet nice. Eclipse. Um, this is like my, what I feel is like the AK of like a paintball marker. I have like thrown this thing in the mud. I have literally core sampled all the way Come nearly on. into my control bore <laughs> and like still been able to shoot it clear. And I had an Empire Mini GS. This was like nice. getting into paintball, like into speedball. This was sort of my first comp marker that I bought, actually from ANS. But this thing was like a nightmare to get into the country um, for a little simple fact. When markers per se come into Australia, they'll actually have like a serial number on the grip. Now, because this was made for the American market, it didn't come with one. It actually come on the box. And on the back part of the grip, before customs would release it, I don't know how well you can see it, 
But before customs would release it, I had to get a dealer to travel five hours to pick it up from customs, take it to an actual gun armorer, and have a serial number carved in the in the grip of the gun before customs would release it to a dealer. Wow. So wow. that that is like the headache to get a toy. Wow. See how and, that we are here in the States? I mean, all we do is get on Velkin.com and boom, <laughs> it's getting sent to you, baby. <laughs> well, it, that, that's kind of like what we hope to try and get because of the sport in this country – it's, it's now starting to get noticed more than what it was. Um, and we're trying to get the lawmakers, the legislators to really kind of see sense. Like I know in America, oh, sorry. Um, I know You're in voice. America um, that <laughs> it, oh, whoops. Have I exited or something? <laughs> no, you just you well, tilted it. Your yeah. your sound is good, but your video is sideways. It's, it's frozen. Yeah, yeah. You, you no. got like the big, big quill. Of... <laughs> oh, we lost oh. him. Uh oh, you'll be back. You'll be all back. All he yeah. needs to do is all he needs to do is completely log out and then and log, log right back, back in again. Yeah. He's pretty smart. Kid. He'll figure it out. You know something? I I think that people would really like to hear that that on your show the other night. We had Gino tell us how he got started in paintball, and I, I thought that was intriguing as hell. And uh, I, I'm sure my viewers would absolutely love. Let me pull, pull. Hey, hey Connor, sorry. Back <laughs> Technical no difficulties. The Earth yeah. kind of tilted down here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, we thought it was because of the axis of the Earth. We weren't sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but Tectonic anyhow, uh, yeah. Uh, Gino was on Steve's show. Uh, the other day and anyhow Gina was telling how he got started in in paintball and to me it was an extremely intriguing uh story i was just i loved it i'm sure my viewers out there would love to hear how this guy which is a giant in the sport got started yeah. Gina, would you mind oh really you gotta tell a story uh, just one more time <laughs> and we won't ask you for the third time all right let, let me see if i can speed it up um <laughs> no so basically uh I used to work for my dad. I was his slave. And uh rounding up dinosaurs? Yeah, basically whatever, whatever happened. <laughs> six, seven days a week. And and there was these guys, they always had camouflage on. They were coming in. I'm like, what are you guys doing? And they go, paintball. I'm like, what? What what's paintball? So uh I'll tell the story a little deeper. So because this is hilarious. But anyway, so I said, Hey, get me a magazine. And they go, Well, it's illegal in New Jersey. Uh, and I go, well, give me a magazine. I want to see a magazine. So I end up buying a magazine and uh, reading up about it a little bit. And that's where I found Guy Cooper and bought my first case of paint next day air. And I started selling it to these guys. But, you know, something I didn't say on Steve's uh, broadcast was I couldn't figure out where to buy these cigar tubes. Okay. So I actually went out in the woods where the guys played, and I start picking up these cigar tubes, right? And then I start washing them, and I'm like, how do I? How am I going to clean these things? I got to put the balls inside these tubes. So uh, I actually was washing them, and then standing them straight up, and then like sticking paper towels in there, and trying to <laughs> trying to dry these tubes. So I had like <laughs> hundreds of tubes and dirty caps. I had to clean the caps, and then I bought one or two cases of paint from Guy Cooper stuck them in these tubes and then start selling to these group of guys. So that, that's kind of how I got started. So, uh, wow. I still have a whole bag of them damn tubes too. You know that <laughs> when I started playing paintball, it was the only place to buy them was a place in town called honest John's. He had a gun shop here and you, I'd buy them by the case. Now a case consisted of 12 tubes for $36. They were th yeah. they were three dollars a tube, yeah. So you know you pick and choose your shot back in the day, you know. Now yes. now you got these markers, you know they're shooting a hundred balls a second. <laughs> I mean, jeez, <laughs> yeah. that, that's an intriguing story. I mean, and now look where you are today. Yeah, that, that's kind of how I started, and and uh, and then I take that money and I stick that profit into this profit, and before you know it, I kept buying more stuff, and I just kept pushing it all together, and instead of having money i had product and i kept buying more and more product that's kind of how i did it back in the day 
And that's yeah. kind of how we still do it in the day. Uh, <laughs> yeah. More product. Yeah, if you have product, you can sell it. You know, if you don't yeah. have product, you can't. Oh, I thought you were talking about taking stuff from the field, washing it off. <laughs> yeah, well, it. That, that was a bonus story. Secondhand that stuff. That that's always the best. No, <laughs> actually, actually, everything I've gotten from Vulcan is just fantastic. I'm just joking, just so we're clear. Oh, absolutely. Check it out, guys. I I got a question for you, Gino. Um, what was actually the first ever kind of paintball marker that you bought? Like um getting into the game Good well I, I hate to say it but uh my first gun was a splat master <laughs> oh okay all right we, everybody's was just about yeah my splat they're master. only legal in queensland <laughs> yeah but yeah splat master was like wow this is unbelievable and then i ended up buying like uh yeah, like a VM sixty eight or uh, the um, sixty eight mags. Uh, we used to really trick out the VM sixty eights back in the day. I mean, every accessory you could possibly put on it: field strip screws, sight rails, uh, front back bottle adapters. So you know, we did a lot of uh, uh, the Sheridan guns back in the day. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah cool. you know, so many people started with a splat master. It's not even funny. You know, I, I had a construction company back there and I had a partner back then and uh, we didn't know what to get him for his birthday. We had like 40 guys working for us. So one guy goes, Hey, I know something cool. And I said, well, go, I gave him some money. I said, just go buy it and bring it over. Well, mm-hmm. he brings it over and that's what it was, a splat master, right? So anyhow, we give it to him for his birthday and he goes out and he starts shooting it. Well, I had to shoot it. Well, next thing you know, I was down there and I got one. So I, my partner goes, well, you know, I know this little tiny field, you know, this lot. Let's go. I'll take you on. I said, all right. So we go out and we're playing against each other. Next thing we knew, we were out there one Sunday and all 40 of our guys working for us had these damn things. And we showed up and we're like, this ain't going to work on this little bitty lot no more. But the Splatmaster, you know, for what it was back in the day, it was phenomenal when we first got it. And uh, I got to tell you, that Splatmaster brought a lot of people obviously, into the sport. Yeah. Hey, Fred, you know what this picture is here behind me? I can't see it. I'm old. Well, it's it's this whole mural here behind me. You know what that is? No, tell me. Wow, okay. That's the first ever paintball shot in the history of paintball. Oh, really? Yeah, that was uh, Bob Guernsey's, uh, and that's how they tested the – the, well, they used the nail splats first, but that's that was the first. This this board was at his house. Steve, how can I make that big? How can I make Gino just the whole thing for a second? If you if you look down along the bottom, you'll see little faces, and you'll see a big. You'll see like a, a like a big window, and it should be on more to the left. It's on the right. It, okay, yeah, and all can, the way to the I, left. And I can move it around a little bit. I mean, it's well, I want to. I want to put the whole thing on if I can get it. I hope I don't take everybody off here. Let's see what happens. Well, you can shrink yourself and then just put Gino on by himself. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> yeah, that worked out great, Steve. <laughs> yeah. And how'd this you, is why, as the Christmas you? show, I, I, I'll be in control see. of the electronics. This is all latex. <laughs> this is real. Steve, cool. steering the ship, everybody. <laughs> 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 How did you get a hold of that? Well, well, I guess uh, there was an auction at World Cup for all a lot of Guernsey's collectibles, and uh, this was one of them. And I'm like, that's not getting away, no yeah, matter I what. Guess not. No wow. matter what. And I was end up uh, bidding against uh, Junior from Tipman, and <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm getting that no matter what. <laughs> so. We uh, how both, cool is that? Yeah, we both ran the bid up pretty high, and uh, the money went to uh, Bob Guernsey's wife, which you know was was a nice thing that you know. So, no matter what, I said I'm getting it. <laughs> finally, <Right. laughs> uh, finally, Junior backed off, and uh, I end up getting it. Very cool. Yeah, because um, uh, Tina, I can't remember her last name now. She posted on Flagpole Productions on my site um, that she had a Splatmaster signed by Guernsey. So it's on my site right now. I thought that was pretty cool. And then she she also put on an old case of uh, Nelson paintballs 
I mean, it, <laughs> you see the box. The box looks like it's about 100 years old, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, back in the day, Nelson was a hell of a paintball, though. I mean, it shot straight. It shot yeah. good. Yeah. Nelson was great back in the day. Absolutely. Uh, probably probably still good, too. I mean, uh, you know, they make paint to order. and uh, But back in the day, this was real paint. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Real paint. Oh, yeah. yeah. It didn't wash off like it does now. Believe yeah. me. No. <laughs> no. And then you got hit in the mouth. You tasted it for like three days. Yep. So, yep. Hey, Gina, we're getting all kinds of we're getting people chiming in here, but they're, they're all Facebook users. That's all well, it says. I will. I will say that so because I a lot of hits right now, but I don't know who the hell it is. You know? um, speaking of speaking of Facebook users and hits, oh, I wait. made that post about the Vulcan M17 that you're going to be giving away. Right. And you've already got 14 people signed up on the post to say, enter me. I Just made the, the rules up. one wow. person per like only one only one entry per person and you simply just say enter me underneath and we so far we've got 14 people on the flag full productions post wow just that's so you know. not too bad man for just a few minutes yeah good <clears> job <throat> steve right on i i should just for prosperity go enter me even though i could never even if i was lucky enough i could never uh win it but like it, it'd just be like pretty cool well you, you <laughs> could go ahead and, and if you win it then you could donate it to, to somebody in the u.s yeah yeah what i'm that, curious or, though is if they're not technically firearms could we take it apart and send it in pieces because there's no single part on it other than maybe the grip itself that actually looks like a firearm part you might have Absolutely. been able to do that before you just broadcasted it. <laughs> well, no, there, there is that sensibility there. And the, you're 100% correct. And I think that that would actually work. But it's more that overall, that when it is assembled, that even if I had it and was just standing there, a, someone could mistake it for a real gun because we have this stupid uh, law in here called an appearance law. And it simply states, if it looks like a gun, it's a gun. Whereas if I put my hand like that and went bang, technically by the stupid law definition, I've got a firearm in my hand. Or All my right. hand is now a firearm. <laughs> it's, not I just, it. it's not worth it. I, I was yeah, just yeah. thinking that... that all. If we sent each individual part, yes, it would cost a lot in shipping. But if we sent each individual part with a specific diagram stating serial number or what the part number is, where it goes, what like in like a like a sheet, I'm just trying to figure out a way to get it to you. But yeah, if you're going to get in crap yeah, once I'm, you assemble I'm, it, I'm never mind. Get, we wouldn't want to get anybody in trouble, even on no, this of end. Of course not. We wouldn't, we wouldn't <laughs> it's not it'd, not it'd be something perhaps for Valken. Um, while while we've got the commander in chief, I suppose that something perhaps <laughs> to uh, possibly Andy's consider. The is just the best. Yeah, that, that was pretty good. You hear what he called you, Gino? I heard. I heard. Uh, <laughs> but, you yeah. know, because no, we they think they think I'm a dork. You know, <laughs> <laughs> more more that, from a from an Australian point of view that. It, it's almost like we only get access to, say, probably half of Valken's um, product range because the other stuff might not be able to come into the country, especially within your MAGFEDs. Because MAGFED has now only been legalised in New South Wales, they're very stringent. But, I mean, I've even seen Tipman Stormers in the country Um that are in New South Wales and they got in no no trouble at all because I'm guessing now that with the law change that paintballs are no longer firearms, customs has probably seen it and just gone, yeah, it's a paintball, it's not a gun, you know, like um so but we still have to have permits and everything like that. And, so and, well, and serial numbers too. Oh, go ahead, Gina. Well, serial numbers too. Yeah, the serial number still has to be on it because that way then the serial number goes on my permit um, as to how it works. And literally, I just carry my permit around on the phone and I go into my emails and that's how easy it is to be um, bought out. And from a dealer here in Australia, 
a paintball dealer or even a venue permit holder can sell me the paintball marker. So when I go, say, to paintballshop.com, shout out Mike Whitebrew, um, that um, I can order the gun online, give him my permit number, and he'll send it straight to my door. Okay. So we've got that kind of system happening. So it, I'd be interested to see how, how it would go around because I personally love a lot of Valken products. I oh, yeah. um, A lot and of the protective he, gear. Yeah, they got a lot more than just the markers. You know what I mean? They yeah, got like well, yeah, masks, you know, the pods, like, uh, the belts. The shirt but, I'm wearing here. <laughs> what about different color guns? What if it's yellow? What if it's blue? What if it's red? I mean, that, that's just, that should go through easy, right? 100%, because then it's like, even if it, like, one of the other big ways to get around it is orange tippet. Because denotes toy. Chip, um, huh? Yeah. Interesting. And, well, we have something like, coming. We have something coming uh, that's going to be huge. And I'm sure somebody in Australia is going to have exclusive on it. And uh, it'll be ready early summer, late spring. And uh, it's MagFed. So you guys are going to love it. Well, yeah, I've been about that for a while. I can't wait for it either. <laughs> yeah. Well, at our local field, we actually shoot Vulcan SW ones. Yeah. Well, for our mechanical good. markers. That's a great gun. That's a good yeah. gun. Yeah. You yeah. know, oh, reliable. Bill, I'm gonna let Bill jump in here real quick. You know, yeah. Bill, you've been sitting here so nice and patient, buddy. But you know, I don't believe you've ever told me how you got started in paintball. I know it was a minute you got off the arc, but you yeah. know, <laughs> well, I, was, I was behind you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh. I actually, uh, I told the story once before, but I had to go get groceries for my mom. And uh, I was driving down the road, heading to town, and there was a guy standing there on the side of the road with a walkie-talkie wearing camouflage. And I stopped. You know, I thought something was going on, and he was just waiting for a bus to show up. It was a company called Field Warriors. This was back in, uh, it was in February, the first weekend of February, 1984. No, No, it was right before that. It was, it was before February. It had to have been early, probably mid-January. And uh, this company was based out of Springfield, Missouri, and, and they'd load up everybody on a, a big camouflage bus, bring them down to their field. They'd charge them $20, and they'd get two tubes of paint and a bolt-action PGP, you know, just a pullback style. It didn't have a pump on it or nothing. And you got two tubes of paint and a CO2, and you played five games. And waited for the bus to come back with the next load, and they would unload, and you'd get back on the bus, and they brought you back to Springfield. And uh, so I, you know, I I was able to go play that very next weekend. And after about four or five games, I started working for them, and you know, and that's here you are today. Yeah, <laughs> and I, yeah, I'm 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 still here. <laughs> yeah, Gino, he you know he has tons of markers, Gino. You know, when I first had Bill on, I thought he was in a store. I thought that's where he was talking. <laughs> He's not. That uh, him and Bud Orr are extremely good friends, and uh, this is his place. I mean, you you can't even imagine how many markers this guy has. I don't even know how many guns we have. Well, guess what? Back, back in the day, that case of paint probably was $175 a case. Yeah. Yep. That's absolutely yep. right. You know, yep. I remember my first case of paint, and I'm talking wholesale, was 122 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was a little I, over I used to, $100. Yeah. I used to buy paint for 122 per box on a skid. Yeah. We were, we were getting it from uh, PMI at the time. Uh, they're in Chicago. Mm -hmm. yeah. And... Um, then yeah, it, it was always a buck and a quarter, a buck and a half out here. Yeah, yeah. It, everywhere I traveled, it was that. Even when you went to the tournaments and stuff, it was that much to start with. I used to pay for my games. I would actually go out and pick up ammo and CO twos that people would drop, and the field owners would pay you retail for it. And yeah. and I, I would sit there and sell that damn paint back to them just to pay for my entry. You know, and I you know I was. I was just right around the corner from them. So I was always there after school and stuff. And uh, that that's how I paid for my entries was by selling them their, their paint and their CO2s that people would drop. You know, I'd, I'd sell them back to them. Wow. And, yeah. Well, you know, something like that's going on right now in paintball. Because of COVID, 
a lot of our we're selling goggles galore. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, I don't know. We probably did twenty containers of goggles since COVID, but uh, dealers are making people or offering them to buy new goggles, and it's a great idea. And they say, hey, you want this goggle? It's fresh because of COVID or whatever. And like people are like, yes, they put it on, and they're leaving the goggles all over the fields, and the field owners are picking them up and re re uh, <laughs> rewashing them and reusing them again. Clean yeah. them up. Yeah, so that's like a little tip that uh, Fields has been doing, and it's it's great. We got some dealers buying like five hundred at a time, and uh, a couple weeks later, they're buying another five hundred. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Do you know? Do you remember this jacket by any chance? Oh yeah, that's that's a special jacket. Uh, Jeff Hamilton made that jacket. Yeah, you gave me this years and years ago. I must have really liked you because that's a special jacket. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you gave me, you gave me that years and years ago. Yeah, we, I, we only made about thirty of those, thirty six of those jackets. Was that right? Yeah, I got pictures. Wow. I got pictures on the Eiffel Tower with it, on the Arc of Triumph with it. So I got pictures all over the place with that jacket on. I used to walk through the airports. I'd have that on and my jeans and my snakeskin boots, man. And people would just just stop and stare, and they'd have to come up to me and go, "What's paintball? What's paintball?" And I'd just sit and explain it to him. So that jacket got a lot of publicity. Believe me, he, he's got a picture on the ark with it. I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I wasn't on the ark. I was in a little boat behind rowing. There was not enough room when I got there. Uh, the tug, the ark stuff. tug. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, proud of we, that jacket, man. I got to tell you. But yeah, you gave me that years and years ago. We uh, say that you've been playing paintball since Centurion was a rank, not a tank. <laughs> there you go. And ships were made of wood. Men were made of steel. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you hear it all the time. Oh. Believe me. You know, when I started in paintball, the, the first thing, you know, I, I fell in love with the sport right away. Yeah, just... There was no question about it. And I, I would go and I would try to get people involved in the sport. I go, yeah, I, you got to come and try this paintball. And they're like, ping pong. I go, no, 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 yeah. no. Ping pong. And they go, yeah. ping pong. I go, no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah. I heard that so many times, man. Yeah. Hate ball. I'm not yeah. kidding you. I was just going to say that, Fred. I, I was just going to say that. But you notice they don't say that anymore? No, no, no. Hey, but you know what? Between that and and I tell her when I finally explain to them, they go, "Oh God, that's war. That's war games." I go, war. "No, no, no, no." I said, "It's capture the flag." Period. I says, "You know, you go out and you have a good time there." I said, "You can go out and play football," and I said, and "Just about get killed." I said, "You're not going to get killed unless you're going to have a great time, meet a bunch of new people." But that's how I when I first started paintball, that's some of the stuff I went through trying to promote the sport was was stuff like that. You know, the people at just didn't didn't have a clue about it, but ping pong was a big, big thing. Yeah, they said that. They they yeah. said that constantly. Yeah. You got it they, too, huh? So here, constantly. Yeah. Here, here they always said pinball. There's a that we didn't too. we, we didn't know we that didn't too. know we didn't know you had to wear uniforms to play pinball, and I was like, no paintball. Like <laughs> pinball? I was like no. God. Oh, that'd be classic seeing a whole bunch of cam dudes rock up into a pinball hall or an arcade. <laughs> just to, like, and 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 be like, right here, cover the left machine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we, I, I, in the mid 90s, um, we were all supposed to go play a tournament. And so we went out and we walked the field, my team and I, and we were all in old school tiger stripe bdus not the tiger stripe like what fred schultz has got behind them but the the jackets with the buttons and the but not the pullovers that most people think when they think paintball tiger stripes but the old school like one of the army tiger stripes yeah, bdus exactly so we all went out to the field we did stuff and then we walked the field we did whatever and we're like what do we do in this town and like well let's go grab something to eat so we all just sort of came into the restaurant com completely everybody started looking at us funny and then we went down the street we went to this arcade and everybody just sort of looks this is funny but the best was when we walked into um to play laser tag and we walked in and it was everybody was just sort of looking at us funny and we're like what <laughs> I, 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 that's why I, I, and the, the funniest thing about the laser tag was is they started uh reading off the rules it's like okay so nobody's allowed to run 
we're like, wait, what? Nobody's allowed to hide. What? You're not allowed to cover your vest so people can't hit your sensors. And we're like, what? Can't <laughs> use the knife to conserve ammo. <laughs> the, the game was the game was 20 minutes long. I know that I was out there for about seven minutes. I got bored and I walked off the field and none of us made the full 20 minutes. We were just bored out of our mind. We were expecting something exciting, but Connor, when you started, did people understand what you were doing or, or was it just like we were just talking about? Um, in some respects, yes, um, because my local field uh, here at Elite One Paintball in Coffs um, is like we're, we're fairly well known even within our local area um, because our tournaments are probably some of the best Um on the mid North coast for like playing field and everything like the grass is manicured and everything else. But, um, I still, despite the fact that you can clearly see that it's like a paintball Jersey and, you know, wearing a lot of the same gear. Um, I still get funny looks when I walk into Mickey D's, um, just to get a burger after, after the <laughs> game, because they're like, what the hell is this? Like some dreadlock dude. I'm usually wearing this Cryptek uh, style jersey by um, a very good mate of mine. And um, dreadlocks, camo, and this dude walking in, and they're just like, okay, is this joint about to get robbed? Um, <laughs> and, you know, because I put the lemon juice on my face for the invisible ink, um, <laughs> so I can't be seen on the camera. Well, you should be um, here. Everybody's got to wear a mask. I go into the yeah. bank today. You know, when I used to go into the bank years ago, I walk in, somebody had a mask on. I put my hands up, you know. Now <laughs> everybody's got a mask on, you know. So that, that just kind of kind of fakes you out a little bit there, too. So I know a little bit about what you're talking about there. <laughs> yeah. And um, it it's it is known that that's what people wear if you have a field. Um that's closest to you. The closest field to me um, outside my own is about a two and a half hour drive. And then after that, it's five and a half hours to the next paintball field. So um, give them a plug, if, give, give, give them a plug, the paintball field. Come on. And your mates. Um, the, um, I'd like to shout out to Elmo Sheen for the Jersey, the 33 degrees elite one paintball in Coffs Harbor. Um, there's action paintball in Sydney, which is run by Mike, Mike Wybrew, who also runs Paintball Shop. Um, and uh, my sister, Boo, who is also um, one of the up-and-comers. I also have my own sort of Instagram at MonsterBallin88, but that's my player name is Monster, and my number's 666. Um, and the, I, know, I just love the sport. And, like, I feel really honoured to be sitting amongst you guys. Like, little old boy from down under would have never <laughs> seen or met any of the OGs of, of paintball, and especially from America, from Canada. Um, and, you know, I'm just very big honoured to be on the show and well, to talk to all of you guys. We're really happy to, to have you on. You know, you know, when I got to talk to you the first time, that's the reason I put you on, Connor, is because I kind of pick and choose who I put on this show. Um, you know, it's got to be people that that not only love the sport, but are willing to help push the sport in a positive manner. And that's the reason oh. that you're on this show, period. Otherwise, uh, it just wouldn't happen. And, you know, Gino, Gino, he's he can come on anytime, man. You know, I just, <laughs> I, 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 I'll have Gino. So, you know, I don't do that for a lot well, of people. I'm going to jump because my phone's got zero bars. Or, or dots, whatever. So I'm going to jump. Is that okay, guys? That's perfect. Gino, Gino thank you for coming on. Hey, yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you, Gino. Me, very very yeah, hey, hit me on uh, Instagram or Facebook, all right? I will. I'll do that. All right. All right. You go. got it, guys. See you, Gino. Yep. Adios. Stay safe, what? buddy. Yep. All right. Everybody, everybody be safe. Thanks. Yep. Merry hey, wish him a Merry Christmas real yeah. quick. Yeah. Merry, Merry Christmas, everybody. Yep. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas Gino. All right. all right, buddy. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <clears throat> All right, All so right, Fred, that was a easy, Gino. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, was, like I gotta interrupt this for a second just before you go. We thank Gino, but that was a very, very nice way of thanking Connor for the 
beautiful words he said about calling us all OGs and happy to be on. But all I could think was, crikey, I think he's about to start crying. <laughs> <laughs> Throw another shrimp on the barbie and give me another VB. We'll toughen through this. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I couldn't sit on that any longer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, God. I, uh, and, yeah, yeah right it's away, just... we're still laughing about the other night when you said you were double fisted down in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? That's because <coughs> you're all $20 is $20. That's why. <laughs> oh, 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 Jesus. Oh. <laughs> 20 I've bucks. Been, 20 bucks. I've been waiting to say that all night. I was like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, no. hey, real quick, Connor. There's there's uh, some stuff that this guy named Caesar uh, makes here. Um, which, oh, heck yeah. And yeah. anyhow, it impregnates in the metal and it makes the metal so slippery. Yeah, right there. Ultra silk, it's called. Heck yeah. Oh, That's and, and let me tell you, Connor, I guess when you put that on your marker, he he treats it and it actually impregnates. Yeah, there it is. Steve's got it too. Yeah. yeah and it, it impregnates into the metal itself. Uh, so what's what then, Bill? You don't have to oil it or what's the deal? Uh, yeah. It's I got it the just, new stuff may- too. Oh, yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, this is yep. this is the, the brand new batch. This is the brand new formula. Uh Caesar gave it to me at World Cup. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, he I called know. me today um, because uh, after he called me, I told him, I said, yeah, I said, Bill sent me a, a, <clears throat> a video of the, the autococker that you sent back that you treated and sent it back to him. Yeah. And he was firing at one hand and it was just absolutely yeah, it's, it's rocking. Question. Super fast. Yeah. <laughs> um, how, how do I get that in Australia? It, do you have an Australian distributor for that? Because uh, that's just probably, he'd probably, he'd probably contact him. He'd probably send it to you. Yeah, yeah you we'll could, we'll get to... you some, Connor. Yep. Yeah, we'll get Wait. some to you. Yeah, it's yeah. it's incredible, incredible stuff. The way what Bill, it, tell us about what it. It, what it does. It fills the, the any any pores you know in the surface, and it basically creates zero friction. So there's no friction between the parts moving, and it uh, it increases you know the efficiency and everything of your gun and. Uh, from what I've seen, it, it changes the sound of the gun slightly also. It puts more of a ping to it. And wow. uh, it. I am one of the slowest autococker shooters ever. And uh, I, what, what happened was I was sending some bodies off to them to have them clear anodize them so I could use them for display. And uh, he was like, well, send, send some guns, you know, and we'll cover, you know, coat them for you and stuff. And uh, so... So Bud sent his, uh, he had a black magic and then a, a pump, a sniper that Jeff had made him. And so I sent Bud's guns to him, you know, to have the treatment done. And uh, I got them back a couple days ago. And uh, yeah, they, they're, it's sweet. You know, I, I put air on it, you know, threw on one of Dan's tanks, a more layer tank. I just got me a 98 cubic inch 4,500 system. Yeah. The ultralight. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it just, it shot beautiful. And it's really, it's one of the fastest guns that I've actually shot, you wow. know, personally. And, and I'm not a fast autococker shooter. I just, I can throw a lot of paint, but I'm usually accurate with it. So I don't need to shoot fast. And uh, that you could just, you could use that gun to compete against any of these other space guns right now, you know. Well, you could. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Have oh. you seen have you seen that, Connor? Oh my god. Yep. Hey, look at that. So that is one of Caesar's creations. Yep. That shocker. is an ultra shocker. And it's the XLS. It's not the new amp. And yep. this is one of 15. Um, <clears throat> there's only five in this color. Oh my god. Yeah. That this is whole, sexy. This whole thing was boom treated. Um, that's one of the things that makes it an ultra shocker. The other thing is it comes with both frame, CVO frame, the electronic. The, the whole thing is all match anodized, right? Yep, that's the cocker Ooh. right there. Yeah, this is Bud's. Oh, that's so sent. sweet. And it just, it's just. That's Bud Ors, right? Uh, yeah. 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 It's ungodly I'll get, fast. 
You know who Bud Orr is, right, Connor? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, I'm fanboying right now. Like, I'm just like, oh, yeah. what and I wouldn't then, do for 20 bucks now. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, just to get one of those. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the pump uh, that he sent. Uh, oh, my God. It's a, uh, I believe Jeff made it for him. It's a 26 out of 50, uh, but it's it's smooth. His his pump system's a little bit different. It it springs forward. Uh, you know, I'm used to one with you know hardly any spring in it at all. It it won't push the bolt forward, but that one does. And I'm kind of liking it. You know, it it, it Steve, actually you've got I, me I like mesmerized. The, yeah, I right like the now. feel of it now. So it's like, gosh dang, you know. But but it definitely makes a different noise when it's done. So you know, whatever it does, it's you know it's working great. But the, the only way I can it has that that black mag the the black magic there it's got the same sheen as your gun does steve the it, gloss yeah it's a it's a different kind yeah. of look though oh, it, you know right. it's it's not a normal it's not like you know your no. everyday guns you know no. it's it's you can tell when it's been treated it's it's it feels even you know not really slick but yeah it is slick but oh yeah it's hard to explain you, you'd it, have to it, well, that's it's, what it does. It impregnates the metal, so it it like Caesar says, it keeps it slippery a lot, lot longer. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. You see yeah. that shocker again, <laughs> please. The <laughs> there, man. So. so, the reason why oh, yeah. I broke this out, I mean, this is an ultra shocker, and that's because it's all been treating with, oh, it's had the boom treatment and whatnot. But the reason yeah. why I broke this out is because I literally took this to uh, World Cup this year, and so Caesar and I went over to the shocker booth. And they had special tools. They hadn't actually tested it. So they hooked up They hooked up special pressure tools. And they determined that because this is essentially a stock gun with just a whole lot of fancy anodizing and um, the boom treatment, that this actually gets approximately, um, I think it's 5 to 7% more air efficiency than a stock shocker. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, oh, Connor, if you take a look, it says Facebook user. It says Connor, get a hold of me on Facebook Messenger. That's Caesar Pizzo. So yeah. I'll make uh, sure yeah. that I'll make sure after the show, if you want, I'll give you a an inter, an introduction. Can you, can you pull him up? Through. We're running a little long. Can you pull that. Caesar up real quick? Can I? No, you're in got control. I know, but I, I'm afraid if I try to do it, I'm going to knock everybody off. But I can't control your laptop. I know you can. I, you, I, I'll you invite him I, if you know if I if I get knocked oh, off. It you want matter. me to send an invite? That I can do. I know what you mean. One second. Oh wow, it took that long, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I guess because it's up there in Canada. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm yeah. so, smack you. Jeff, yeah, Jeff so, Thompson uh, says hi to everybody too. Jeff's a good guy. I'm actually going to have Jeff on my show hi, after, Jeff. Uh, the beginning of the year. Um, he's a terrific person. He's one of the good Canadians. So, um, hey, Connor, you were saying you're not allowed to uh, display your the paintball markers. You got to keep them in a in a box yeah. secured. Well, not not currently because I kind of got them sitting with me. Yeah, but yeah. Um, when not in use, I actually have to put them in a steel lockable box that is padlocked that just goes under my bed before um, the law change that also changed the minimum age you could actually play. It's 12 now. Uh, it used to be 16, but um, before that they actually had to be stored in a proper firearm safe that had three anchor points in the wall. Um, and kind, police kind of would like, regularly. It's kind of like having to uh, take your firearm and driving through Illinois. You pretty much have to have the, the same thing <laughs> with your handgun. <laughs> That's what we have right. to do to display real firearms here is too. It has to be anchored. Same law. Wow. Yeah. And <laughs> um, I have to, even with transport, I have to keep them in a steel lockable container. And then um, most of the tawnies that I play in are semi uncapped. I don't actually play ramp or millennium or the PV XL or, or whatever the other settings are that come out. Um and like I've always played speedball tournaments like that because getting the whole sort of fingers fluttering and doing it on both hands and 
I've I've always been like, woo, yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's like lasers and shooting ropes and. Um, oh, you imagine if you had to do that, Bill? You'd have to get a, a container, man, to put your stuff in. I know. Yeah. Well, I played back, and and I'd carry like ten to twelve pods. And uh, last time I played World Cup was in two thousand. And uh, I think we we got the prototype shoot uh, this thing that confused everybody. It's a <laughs> that's the Thompson looking. That's an actual stock. Thompson stock. Oh, that Ador would put on. Wow. Nice. And yeah. yeah, Connor Bill has so many markers. I can't even begin to tell you <laughs> what this guy uh, has. It's. It, you think he's in a damn store. <laughs> I got to tell yeah. you. Yeah. I'm looking at that. I'd like Yeah. I'm so jealous that if I if I did that, I'd have the cops knocking on my door going, "Why aren't your guns secured?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to interrupt for just a second. I just got a message from Caesar. He goes, "I just have to turn the laptop on." So, I've sent out the message and Okay, well, we'll okay. stay on for a little bit then. Let me yeah. let me sh Connor, this one right here. This I'm a big mag guy, you know that. This yep. guy right here is the number 13 mag made, and it's got the number one Fred Schultz air system from Air America back in the day. That marker's never been fired. I saw the um, TV ad that you did for that with the Air America stuff um, from that show that I was watching that you'd done. Oh, um, yeah, the commercial? Yeah. yeah that I was, was just like, cool. oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> so I I have a question and it's not uh, it's not me poking fun in any way shape or form but this is something I've always wondered Fred why are you proud that you've never fired it like I I I, 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 I mean you, my wife's right here you can ask her I bet no, you I've had the camera. I, know that. I bet you I've had five hundred markers that have been given to me am I right but I what I would do is I I would play with them and then I'd give them to somebody. I've never sell them. I just give them to, I mean, I have gave so much stuff away to people. This is just one thing. See, it was number 13 and it was given to me specifically by, by Tom K and the air system is a number one Fred Schultz system right. from air America. I just never had the desire to fire it. Just, you gotta fire it, fire it man. You, never you, you, I gotta, gotta, you gotta, I gotta point it at somebody in anger just yeah. once. <laughs> I got a tipman down here that was used on the show that we never used on the show. It was there to use, but I never, we never used it because, you know, Dennis Tipman sat down like uh, 30 guns, you know, 30 markers for us to use, but everybody brought their own marker and I used it in one game. And then the other game I, I used my mag in, but I got one down here. It's brand new, never been shot. You know, I, I just got tons of stuff. Where's that? I, I don't he, like Matt, Hope, Matt Hops is 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 bringing, he's saying run some paint through that. See, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Matt. No, yeah. actually, yeah. You, you know what you need to do, Fred, is is have Caesar do the treatment on that because that stainless yeah. steel will well, even be better, even be better. And and with the mags, I, I believe they heat up more, and this stuff works yeah. better when it's heated up. Also, well, this this I'm not. I'll never shoot anything through it. I keep it just as a, a treat for myself. Caesar, when I talked to Caesar today, uh, when he called me today, I <laughs> he, he goes, "Damn it, Fred, send me your mag." I go, "Yeah." I said, "So I might send him this mag and uh, let him Caesarize um, it and then send it back." The so, just to kind of circle back, like when I was earlier saying about how. Um, you know, hearing about this boom treatment and the grease and, and all of that kind of stuff, like half the reason I like said, you know, like, is there an Australian distributor for that? Because like, I suppose there's another prime example of how behind we are that this, this kind of stuff, especially down here, isn't well known. The only thing that like I would see that ever come close to that with grease kind of stuff that we could get, um, it used to be called Slick Honey, yeah. and it wasn't actually for paintball guns. It wasn't for anything like that. <laughs> it was actually for um, uh, mountain bikes and BMX and yep. whatnot for greasing yep. your bearings. Yep. And it just seemed to work well, but it wasn't something that was well known. And, well, I will, um, I will tell you why you've never heard of Ultra Silk. It is relatively new on the scene. Um, yeah. 
they are they are doing their best to launch it and there is a bit of a controversy um and i'm not going to shy away from it i actually did a lot of research and as you know you or I should say, as you know, the general rule of thumb is you never put a petroleum based oil in a paintball gun. That is yeah. the rule per thumb. This uh, this ultra silk here, this version has, I think it's 0.3 percent petroleum in it to work as a base for all the other stuff. This is not a petroleum based product, but it has a few percent petroleum in it. Now, back in the day, we would use like regular gun oil, whatnot, and the O-rings would swell and it would lock your gun up and it was horrible and you just something you just don't do. Um, yeah. Somebody with, just put on there, the Boonie Boys use Anal Ease water-based lube. Yeah, that's probably Bobby Doust. Um, <laughs> but the thing is... Yeah. <laughs> Why are you changing the subject? <laughs> no, no. The, the thing He's is... Bringing Richard back stuff. Mexico. Uh, <laughs> Hey, I'm trying to plug a product here. I know. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. So I'm not so Russell Jackson. Of, <laughs> it's Russell Jackson of the All Americans and Shocker Paintball and whatnot. He actually took an O ring and he dropped it in this stuff and he left it for a year. And I was talking to him directly. Like Caesar, Russell, and I were all like standing in the same place and it did yeah. not swell at all. Hey, here's Caesar, yeah. by the way. Awesome. Connor, I'm gonna we're gonna introduce you right now to the guy that makes this stuff. Oh, hey, hey Caesar, Caesar, how you doing, buddy? Hey, we're, just, we're just talking about your. We're just talking about your loop. <laughs> yeah, I got. Uh, I got a bunch of messages to get on here. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, the new hey, stuff, Caesar, this is Connor. Connor, yeah, how Connor, are you, Connor? From, uh, down under. Good, there. Caesar. Nice to meet you. Yeah, and this is Caesar. This is the guy that makes the ultra silk right here. He's also the guy that's beyond responsible for super cockers. So when you yeah. see those absolutely glorious super cockers that have got the wild anode like the shocker from back in the 90s and on, Caesar is arguably hands down one of paintball's best uh, marker techs that the, the sport has ever seen. You can ask Bill Bailey because Bill yeah. just got one back from Caesar. Yep. Yeah. And, then Bill, a... and Bill sent me, yeah, Bill sent me a video, <laughs> man. He was going to hog heaven. He was just shooting up the storm. And he goes, I'm doing this one handed, Fred. One handed, man. <laughs> so well, you had I, that rocking, Caesar. Yeah. I'm, I'm very interested sort of to hear, to hear about this kind of lube and, and the treatment and stuff because. Um, I feel it'd be even perfect for like Australian conditions because of temperature and climate um, and tell whatnot. Them because it, Caesar, tell them a little bit about it, buddy. The warmer the product gets, the slicker it gets because it it works off of heat. So what it yep. does is it gets smoother. The actual silk that's inside the product is like in the lube. It's in the actual treatment, and it's also in the. Uh, oil that's why i have three products and they all work in conjunction together allowing you yep. to have a barrier between the aluminum and the o-rings so you're riding always on a lubricant you're not bare metal to o-ring surface so and that's why it's i strain it so much to tell people you have to physically have it in your hand before you can even, i can't even talk to you about it because it's so hard for me to explain it to everybody yeah, yeah. well I, I would love to try it like um because the only thing that i've been relying on of late is uh hater sauce um i don't know if you guys know of that oh, uh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah but um There's nothing wrong with that, it this is just better <laughs> yeah well i'm always looking for the next best thing to squeeze any yeah. kind of performance but even for me my love of the sport has also come from teching my own markers and teching and playing with it to get the best that I possibly can. And just hearing about your product, Caesar, I was just like, oh my God, like if there's some new new way of doing it, like hell, I, I am all ears because it's very rare, I suppose, within Australia that we get this kind of product or this kind of technology up in the game until it's probably been out for two years. You know, um, we we don't get something as soon as it's launched or we don't know about it until it's maybe 18 months old. So I'm just like, oh, 
I'm, I'm right, right here, that, finger dude. on the pulse right now. <laughs> How long have you been working on that, buddy? Caesar, uh, the product itself, I used to use it back in the early, you know, two thousands, in just the lubricant side of it. Um, and then when I got out of it in two thousand five, I just the, the product went dormant. And just this year, um, well, it wasn't just this year; it's two years ago when I went back to uh, Pittsburgh and um, I came back out with it and COVID is what made me come back full strength back into paintball. So I was dormant out of paintball since 2005. And then I got back into it, you know, two years ago. And that's when I released the super cocker. And um, I got rid of all those. Those are all super cocker 2020s, Connor. And uh, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I just want it to go down the road smoother. I'm just trying to make everything smoother. I don't want to reinvent anything. Everything's yep. out there. I just want to make it better. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not. Okay. And that's why and then as long as the product, you know, shoots smoother, there's no friction. It's uh, less drag. The dwell on your LV. You have an LV 1.6. What do you have? Uh, this is an LV1. So an the LV1. very first iteration. Okay. Yep. There's, there's a video. Um, there's a video on my page. I don't know if it's still on my page or I sent it to a guy. I just got <clears> done. <throat> I just got done doing an LV for a guy, and I dropped his dwell on his gun by three. Oh wow! Yeah. So Jeez. it was it it dropped the dwell that much. That's how so much smoother the gun was. Um, on a shocker yeah. on an on an amp that comes out of the factory. I don't know, was it 8, 17 or 18? I've got them down to 10 or 11. Um, oh. So their guns are running smoother. On a Lux, it's dropped three. And the um, and a lot of guys have said that they've gotten their guns back from me, and they keep telling me that uh, the uh, rate of the velocity that sells, that they've gone up 20 feet per second by after they got their guns back from me. Well, yeah, that when, oh. when Caesar, when you and I were at... Uh at world cup together when russell broke out the the gauges he's like it's five what was it five seven percent lower than yeah correct five like it was just, five or seven percent that's what's wow. the so yeah and it's the same marker nothing changes other than the treatment you know but you know there's, yeah. there's no one for building these guys connor i gotta tell you um he's known by everybody in the industry for building just super super markers and uh the super cockers, I obviously don't have my hands on one, but I understand from everybody that has them, they are just nothing short of terrific. Yeah. So, they, yeah. so if I can get product over to you over there and you got somebody that can, you know, distribute it, whatever, I'll try to. Um, we do have an import uh, hazmat number for the product. So I have the numbers, the certification to get them everything overseas. Um, you know, I'll I just don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Fly over and you pick know. it up. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, oh, I'll Bailey's wearing my shirt. Yes, I am. It's, yep. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Yep. yep. Heck yeah. So, it's sweaty. Oh. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm taking it easy here. Hell, it's like 30 it, degrees outside. I was going to say, it's cold back there right now, isn't it? Heck yeah, it is. It's it's not that be, bad, but it, it's you should be bad. wearing that hoodie. Degrees is that, bad. Well, that. The, the, well, the hoodies the hoodie might be sweaty because it's behind me. So I got it on the back of my chair. It's extra padding. <laughs> <laughs> it's too hot to wear the hoodie. So. Well, guys, you know I appreciate very much you guys all coming <clears> out tonight. <throat> Thanks for jumping in because yeah, we we're, we're and, trying to tell Connor about it. And you know, um, you know, what better person to explain that than the guy that does it? And yeah. also, if yeah. anybody, if anybody ever wants to know how long the treatment lasts, the actual product itself is so fairly new, but the burnoff rate is eleven hundred degrees. There is no way that the product is ever gonna, I believe, is gonna wear off. Right. So it I mean, realistically. The average paintball user, the product will last longer than the, they're going to have their guns. So, yeah. um, um, hopefully, know. Paul, you know, answers <laughs> that question. <laughs> so, 
I can't, <laughs> I, you know, I can't realistically say it's a lifetime product, but if people want to send their guns in every year and have them treated and refreshed, yes, I, you know, we could do that, but you know, I can't see, you know, impregnating a gun, you know, every six months or every, you know, every year, I, you know, I, I don't see it, you know, going bad at all. Hey, Caesar on a, like an automag or an automag RT, uh, being, you know, with all the stainless steel and stuff, would it work better with that? Even that type of marker? Yes, because the porous, the, it's very yeah. porous. Aluminum yeah. is smoother on, on automag. And that's Fred. I'm telling you right now, I guarantee it. That's what I, I told him. It. He I called guarantee. me up and he was calling at me earlier. Fred, send me your gun, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I, wish, I wish it would be easy even from like here to Australia to be able to send the gun. But it's like once it leaves Australia, it's kind of hard to get it back. Like, yeah. It, it's almost like importing a new firearm. Um, but it would just be uh, parts. It would be it, just the parts. I wouldn't need. Parts. I wouldn't need the whole gun. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that that'd probably be easier. But um, because of the law changes that have happened here, a lot of stuff is like all the other government departments are still trying to play catch up because it's not even. I think the end of this year. It'll be 12 months since the law changed and they've only just brought out like a paintball specific firearm safety course. Um, and the it, it's so stupid and I could rattle on for hours how, how crazy our gun laws are over here. Like I'm very jealous of America's gun laws and, you know, that there is a lot of common sense there. Um, and, but it, yeah, I'd I'd have to see. Robert Hanson. Robert Hanson just jumped in, Caesar, and says you can have my mag. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're, you're probably gonna get all kinds of people wanting to. to yeah, I'm back, yeah. Yeah, back to you. But yeah, that's Robert's a really cool dude. There, and he was all over me about that. Send me that damn mag. Let me. And, and you know, everybody that's had that has sent their markers to you, buddy. Man, it, just nothing but praise when they get them back. So you are the man when it comes to building this stuff. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, look, yeah. there it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There it is. Twenty bucks is twenty bucks. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Damien Fowler just chimed in too. He says hi to everybody. So hey, hi to you, pal. All right, guys. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have to call it a night. Um, I I want to thank all you. Uh, I'm gonna start with you, Caesar. Caesar, thanks for coming on. Yep. Appreciate Thank you jumping you. in. Thanks Explain for being here, Connor. Talk to you right. soon. Pleasure meeting you. I'll you know, talk right. to you soon. You know, right, Caesar, you're invited on anytime you want. Yeah. So right. Take all, care, guys. Just get a hold of me right. and say, put me on and you're on, buddy. Thanks so, for the invite, Steve. Yep. All you're right. You're welcome. You Thanks, take it Caesar. easy, man. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. I, could, I was afraid to do it because I, I don't know how to, I'm not that good with this. I was afraid I'd wipe everybody off the screen if I did it. Again. We had Steve do it for me. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you guys. Yep. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Caesar. Caesar. Too. Caesar. Right. right on, buddy. Right, you take it yeah. easy. Caesar is <laughs> boy. Also, wow. show, uh, you cannot believe how this stuff is. It's just nothing hey. short of terrific. So, like William? Right yep. there. <laughs> All right, buddy. All right. Another yeah. two <laughs> long, you know, I appreciate the help. Keep it. Keep it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you take it by the Connor, real quick. All right, Connor. Hey, have you ever seen a, a warp warp feed autococker? What's a warp feed autococker? Okay, you know, ask first. Do you know what a warp feed is? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. Check it this, out. This is uh, let's, I don't know if you can see it or not. That that's a, a normal warp feed, but it's actually on the side. It's not you know on the top or anything like oh. that. And then uh, your hopper actually goes on top of this device here, and it force feeds it. It blows it in. Yeah, and, but then we've got there's a, a Thompson version of it. I don't know if you can see it there. Yeah, isn't that incredible? Yeah. Wow. You know, and, and that's whoa. And that yeah. and that was sort of like at that time, like the technology that they were using for different loading systems and yeah, that it, it was faster at the time. Cause all we, all we had were, you know, 12 volt, nine volt revies. 
and uh, yep, the eggs with, or whatever with, they're called. With that, you could, you could actually hide into one of the blow up bunkers, and you wouldn't have a hopper sticking out because it's all down below your elbow. And so yep. you could oh. just you could just push your long barrel into the bunker and then shoot out. It was harder for them to even hit you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's I thought cool I'd show well. you that. I, I I don't know if you get to see that type of stuff in Australia. So no, like the only the only sort of OG markers that I know of from back in the day outside of mechanical was either just an auto cocker like uh, Planet Eclipse or like the Tipman Pro Carbines or a Bob Long Angel or like sorry Bob Long in, Intimidator and an Angel. Have you seen oh, something yeah. like? Have you Look seen something that. like that? No. What that, is that? This it's South African. It's a oh. 12, 12 gram, and your paint, your paint actually, you had to put them in one at a time right here, and it's spring loaded. That little knob, yeah. you pull it down to actually load the gun to drop it up. Yep. Yep. And it's wow. uh, you just pat 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 pat, you know. And <laughs> the CO the CO two went right right in there. You just slapped it in there and and. Wow. Shut that! And, but this is from the '80s, you know. This Isn't is that a, something. That, that's really. I, I I thought possibly this type of stuff would be in Australia, you know, in the no. old days. You know, you know, in the old well, days. I'm talking. You know, that's in 35, old, 40 years ago. You know. Well, most mostly paintball sort of started to spring up, probably late '80s, early '90s. Um, yeah, and. A lot of the stuff were like a paintball pistol, but it was almost like it had a magazine that ran down the side of it that you'd have to turn, pull your bolt back, and let the ball drop, then lock it forward, and was then that, shoot. Was that 62 caliber or 68? It would have been 62. Um, yeah. And we've, those... we've actually got some of those guns coming in. A, a guy from Portugal uh, oh, okay. Got a hold of one of our museum guys, and uh, we've we bought twelve of them to you know distribute them across the United States for the displays. And, well, uh, um, very cool. a couple of the guys that I spoke to that would play with those little ones, um, <laughs> literally still lift up their their gums and be like, "See these three teeth got yeah. taken out by one of, <laughs> by those. One of those, like yeah. firing the sixty two, it just wouldn't break, yeah. and yeah. it'd smash your teeth out." Yeah. I love um, it. <laughs> I've all seen right, it, but, all right. We'll see it. Oh, hey, Steve, real you quick, know, real quick on uh, the first issue of Action Pursuit Games, the premier issue. It says world's leading magazine of paintball and laser sports. Yep. <laughs> so I thought you'd enjoy that. I, 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 rem I remember that. I used to own that magazine and. Yeah. Yeah, it all went away in the divorce. But anyway. <laughs> well, all right. Well, Billy, we'll, we'll see, see you. you tomorrow night, buddy. All righty. We'll see you guys. All right. Connor, yep, stay good safe. Evening. Yep. See you. I soon. will. See you, Fred. You too. All it right. was lovely to meet you. Yep. Great meeting you guys. See you again, Bill. Good all right, Connor. Oh, I guess you're going to be show. the next show, buddy. I, I hope you enjoyed being on tonight. Oh, mate. Like, I'm, I'm so happy. And, like... I'm big, big thanks to you. And hey, Steve, man, uh, I'm going to torment you one more time before you go. So this yeah. is the case for the shocker. I took Stop it to the it. World Cup oh. and I had it signed by so many people. Do you know who Tim Montressor is? I've met Timmy. Okay. Well, there his his mom, his dad, and his girlfriend also signed it at World Cup. Tim was very, very big in. Um, the the paintball scene down here at a paintball competition called super sevens right um and um nearly everybody that you would ask around here that's been involved in sevens or gone to play in malaysia right have big big things for tim like he was such a humble man just would bend over backwards yeah and just such a lovely, lovely human being. And we like his, his passing was very, very felt down right. here in Australia. Right. Super sevens has a memorial um, headband um, that they actually, it's a headband tag with TM 40 on it. Um, right. So. Like, so. Well, these were Caesar and, and Tim were good friends. 
Tim played on a lot of Caesar's teams, and Tim is the reason why Caesar was able to create these because Caesar or Tim worked for Shot Smart Parts. So these yeah. were about to get sent out when he passed away. And so on all 15, I don't know if you can see the 40. Yeah. On all 15, the 40 was engraved. So this isn't actually a tribute, but that's what this is. That's why this is special to me. But anyway, I just wanted to tease you a little bit more. Yeah, no. Oh, right, stop it. <laughs> Again, buddy, we appreciate very much uh, you coming on my show tonight. Um, yeah, and Steve, thank you for coming on tonight too, buddy. But you got to hang around a minute. We got to talk about our Christmas show we got we going on. We do. So, but Connor, again, I hope you enjoyed it tonight. I did. I I loved it. I like. I just got to hang with like some OGs of paintball tonight. Like, um, well, you know ask all the questions and you guys just so forthcoming with all the information. And like, I loved the, a lot of the laughing and giggling and, you know, 20 bucks is 20 bucks, but like <laughs> or we'd say uh, $20 reduce down here and down under is $20 reduce. So, there you go. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to actually have you back on again after the first of the year sometime. Um, oh, I'd love that. Yeah, and so you're you're more than welcome. And again, I want to thank you so much for being on tonight. He's oh, like a bad my... smell. He's just not going to go away now, Fred. You stay safe, no, you, buddy. I'm sorry you're stuck with me. Um, <laughs> I promise no to problem. wear a tie next time, Steve. Um, <laughs> I just yanked your chain, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, watch our Christmas show tomorrow night. I'll be wearing a tie on that one. Yeah, I'm All so right. not. Yep. I will. Yeah. I'll tune I will. in. <laughs> All right. Hey, Connor, again, thanks an awful lot, buddy. You stay safe. All right. You guys, too. You guys have a safe and Merry Christmas and Merry Christmas just take you. it easy and we'll definitely catch you up New Year. Yeah. Stay make sure you make sure you call us and tell us how the 2021 is before we switch over. <laughs> I'll be like, guys, this is a trap. Don't do it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> run. Right on, buddy. <laughs> All right. Better. That was Connor from Down Under, everybody. What a great guest he was. Um, him, Bailey, Gino, man. I mean, you just couldn't ask for more, huh, Stevie? No, you really couldn't. By that the way, I'm, I'm listening. I'm just double-checking Flagpole Productions on Facebook because I want to see how many people have. All right, so we've got 34 comments now of people saying, enter me for the Valken um, M17. Yeah, we'll have more by next week. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, real quick, before I, I zip you off here, um, our Christmas show tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be cool as hell. Yes. We got some great people coming on. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm actually going to have my wife on. I'm going to drag her out. So, uh, she's going to be on. So, it should be a pretty good time. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So, so. Tomorrow night, what time is it again? It's just so six. that I make sure I set my alarm. Uh, no problem. It's going to be 6 o'clock Pacific time, 9 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, not my normal starting time at 7 o'clock Pacific time. So everybody, we're starting an hour early tomorrow. Um, we're going to have on Mr. Bud Orr. We're going to have on Mr. Tom K. We're going to have on Mr. Tom Dan, I mean, and John uh, uh, Colby from Air America, now Immortal Air. I always mention Air America first because I love it. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna have some damn good people on tomorrow night. We're also gonna have Bill Bailey back on. Uh, we're gonna have Freddie uh, Vicente on for a little bit. So I think we got a pretty good lineup. I think we're gonna have some fun tomorrow. Absolutely, I agree too. And I I always think of it as Air America too. I mean, I, I know you got to get with the times, but personally. I'd love to see it go back. And I'm pretty sure isn't next year, isn't 2021 uh, a big anniversary for Air America? Uh, it is, you know, matter of fact, Danny, right now, I, <laughs> the new Fred Schultz regulator is coming out. Air Amer well, Immortal Air, uh, Fred Schultz regulator. It's at the laser guy right now. Danny goes, I wanted to have it for the show. He goes, I'm so mad. He goes, so he sends me a picture at a laser company. He goes, <laughs> if you're mad, call them. <laughs> well, if you can, if you can get me the picture, if you want to show it, I can put the, I can put the picture up on the show. 
Well, he's having it lasered. You know, I, I haven't seen it. It's supposed to be an unbelievable regulator. It's supposed to be adjustable and, and pivoting. I, I don't know anything about it. He just said um, that I've been with him for 30 years and uh, it's going to, he had the Fred Schultz regulator back in the day and this is going to be the Fred right. Schultz regulator now. So I, I'd love to tell you about it, Steve, and you'd be one of the first I would tell you and Bailey, but I just, all I know is it's going to be black with gold lasering. That's so, wild. I'm just saying if there's pictures and you want to show it, I will. Send the minute, it to me the minute, oh, the minute and I'll make out. sure that maybe we can plug it on, on the Christmas show. I'll be like, if I have the picture, I can put it up on the screen. Yeah, I think it's at the laser guy right now. I think that's why I was so mad because it was supposed to be lasered today and it's not getting lasered right now. So, but uh, anyhow, that's another, another story. The other thing with the Christmas special is we have, a whole lot of videos that our fans and friends and family have sent in. Now I have grumped, uh, sorry, grumped. Bleh. Can you tell I'm a professional talker? <laughs> um, I have grouped all of them together, but if there's any late um, entries that want to come in, send them to me soon um, in the next few hours, if you can. And what I will do is I will glump, I will glump I'm doing it again. I will group it all together and I will put it in at the end of the show. So you may not get worked into the middle because we're going to be showing th these videos between all the fantastic guests just yep. to make sure that everybody gets to be a part of the show. So if you want to be a part of the show, send me a video 15 to 30 seconds max because I got to put them all together. Just wishing everybody a uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, whatever your whatever thing. Just well wishes. I will make sure it gets on the show to the best of my ability. But if you're sending it to me like five minutes beforehand, you're out of luck. Sounds good. All right, Steve, I appreciate you being on tonight, buddy. All right, Look play with passion, tomorrow, everybody. <laughs> right on, buddy. Mr. Steve McGuire, unknown paintball podcast. All right, everybody. Well, we ran a little long tonight. Um, you know, I try to keep it at an hour, but uh, we went an hour and 36 minutes and, and counting right now. First of all, I want to thank all my guests. Um, you know, Bill Bailey, Steve McGuire, Gino from Velkin, Connor from Down Under. It, it was just a terrific show. And, you know, that's what makes the show is these people. You know, these people, they are the show and it's great. And again, like I said at the beginning of my show, all you people out there that, that chime into my show and you guys share it, and it, I can't even thank you enough for that. You guys are, are helping me spread the word about paintball. Uh, Jeff Thompson, he's watching the whole time. Robert Hansen, thank you guys. Kenny Stewart, you guys, uh, I mean, these are all loyal listeners and, and watchers of the show, and I can't even thank these guys enough. And everybody that watches out there, you guys, what I'm trying to do is build a sport and make it bigger. We're coming out of this virus, hopefully, and next year, we just want to go screaming into to paintball. We just want to have just a great, great time. So, again, I want to thank all my guests for being on tonight. I want to thank, definitely, all my viewers. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you for tuning in. We had over 10,000 hits from last week's show. I can't thank you guys enough. So, for myself, to all of you, tomorrow night, 6 o'clock Pacific time, we're going to have our special Christmas show. So until then, please, play hard, play safe, but play fair. But, man, get out there and play some paintball. See you next week. Oh, tomorrow night, actually.